I can see you're in the battle. Yes, the war still rages on. You don't have to be defeated, though you're struggling to hold on. Oh, my brother, my sister, I am here to stand with you. You are still an overcomer, and I pray. change things. Why weep over it? Why didn't why didn't he just take the whole world and and twist it this way and make it do this and make it do that? He doesn't make you do anything, no. does he? No. no. Now he'll convict you and he'll draw you, but he doesn't make you do anything. And our greatest need today is the power of the Holy Spirit to be in our life. The fire of God. Yeah. The, see, the whole thing is when God comes in a person's life, he gives you the Holy Spirit, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. We leap. 
Do you agree with that? Amen. Uh, we, we do okay, and then somebody crosses us, and we want to pull a 38 out and shoot somebody. And we think, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm about, I'm about ready. And, uh, <laughs> so we think, well, I, I shouldn't do that. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry. And let me tell you something. God, the wonderful thing about the Lord is, all you have to do is go to the Lord when you fail and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, I repent of that and I won't have. Aren't you glad that as a child of God, God does that in your life? How he says is you come to me. And I mean, each one of us pull things and do things and think things that shouldn't be in our minds and shouldn't be in our hearts. And a lot of times it's because we're not really listening to God and we get caught up in this world. And uh, But go to Luke chapter 19 in the Bible. Luke 19, and Jesus is coming into the city. And he's fixing to warn the people there that uh, judgment is coming on Jerusalem and in the temple. And in Luke 19, uh, in verse 37, uh, by the way, uh, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be something if, now we have a lot of Muslims coming to Christ. They actually see the Lord in, in a, maybe in a vision, I don't know, Paul saw different yeah. things. But in order for them to believe, they've been raised their whole life that God is Allah. Well, Allah, uh, whoever that was, is dead. Right. Jesus is not dead, he's alive. As a matter of fact, he, he's making intercession this day for us and all that would call on him. He made it so simple that if you would call on him, he'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. He'll take care of you when you fail. And we live a life really of failure, but we have a strength through him and he fights the battles for us. Now, how does how does he how do we get to the point that we let him fight the battles? We turn it over to him. We say, Lord, I can't handle this. I can't. I mean, uh, there's been times I know that uh, uh, that that 38 would could have been used by my wife to shoot me, but but she didn't do it. Okay, we put up this long. We're gonna make it. Anger is a part of life. And sometimes we get so angry that we want to do something and sometimes we carry it out. You think of people that's in prison today and that have been in prison because at just a rash moment they got angry and did something. And it cost them the rest of their life nearly. And sometimes not as much. But what if God looked at us like that and he judged us? So we need to be real careful that we don't judge people. We judge them a lot of times by the way they look, by the way they uh, act. And we say, well, you know, I don't like that person. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, a lot of times, could be that person, that same person. But in verse 37, he said, when he was come now, even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. They actually saw Jesus. Listen, here's, here's, here's a man that's blind. Jesus, walk, and this man comes to Jesus. And they say, uh, and Jesus, they stop. First of all, the people told him, here's what they told him, the, the blind man. Leave him alone. Okay, instead of bringing people to Jesus, they were telling him to leave him alone. Now we should be telling him, you go to him. Because he's the healer. He's the one that can take care of your life. And so they discouraged him, but he kept following. And Jesus turned to him and said, what do, what do you want me to do for you? Now I ask you this morning, what would you have for Jesus to do for you? Maybe if you had one question you could ask God, one question, what would it be? Uh, maybe there's a bunch of them. Lord, what about this? What do I need? Where am I going? What is, what's your purpose for me? What do you want me to do in life? What about uh, this, this thing I'm doing right now? Is it your will? Is it the right thing? Is it what God wants or is it what I want? 
How many of you been through times where you did things and you made a mistake and you had to you had to back out of it? You say, oh, well, wait a minute. I, I shouldn't have done that. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that to that person. And you know, we, we're bad about that. We can offend people. We all offend people. That's just the way it is. We say things and do things and people offend us. And and But he says, you forgive them. Now, and then he said, saying, blessed is he that, it is, uh, it said, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, which are uh, from among the multitude, said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Now they're telling them, Okay, don't be, don't be carrying on like that. You're calling him king, but yet they called him master. I'm thinking, why? And Jesus asked the question, why you? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? He said, "That's wrong. If you're going to say it, then do what he asked you to do." And he answered and said unto them, "I will tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out." Can you imagine that? How many of you believe that that would really happen? If they were to stop praising him, he was coming in, he was bringing the kingdom in, he was showing them what to do. If they would not have said anything, the rocks would have been praising him. By the way, where did that rock come from that followed them through the wilderness? That rock, that water come out of that rock. And you say, how in the world did that happen? I don't know. There's so many things that we don't know. But I was, I was scared. And I was, this guy was talking about how, I mean, you know how fast the earth is turning right now? Like a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. It's turning. What are we doing? Able to walk around. Huh? You say, how does somebody do that? How does God take care of us? Okay, what about the sun? It, you know how, listen, you know how many earths could go in, in the sun? There are, I guess, hundreds and thousands of earths could go in the sun. What keeps the sun burning? Okay. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> That's the only one it could. And I mean, what keeps the sun in its place? God does. What? But here's the thing that he doesn't control and make us do. He does not make us serve him. Now he's fixing to give these people a choice. He's fixing to tell them something. And uh, uh, blessed is he, then he said, and he answered and said, and when he, and when he was come, verse 41, near and he beheld the city, and what did he do? Wept. He wept over it. Why did he weep over it? Why didn't he just say, hey, you bunch of rebels? No, he wept over it. What about us? What? Okay, my question was, Lord, okay, if you're going to weep over something, why don't you go down and change it? You're God. We're talking about Jesus can do anything. Right. Why don't you make these people serve you? He wasn't going to do it. He, you know why? Because he chose. He chooses the people that are rejects. Amen. <laughs> That's what we are. You put it any way you want to, but he chooses the rejects. Uh, we have an intellectual group today. We have a lot of young people that are really smart. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm serious. They, they, well, the really people smart. of today, our young people, have been brought up with so many things. And uh, when they played with toys, uh, we played with a slinky, and they they play with computers. Mm. I mean, they're doing stuff, and we're and and if you want to really know how to fix something on a computer or anything, just get a seven year old. They can take it and they can do stuff, and you wonder how in the world did they learn to do that? Because we can't do that. See, we were like to say we were brought up. We had a a nail drove in a little wheel that come off the lawnmower and we had a stick on it and we rolled it around. That was the extent of ours. And then we got a bicycle. Well imagine that. Well we I mean we were you talking about cool. We took every we stripped that bicycle down, mm -hmm. took everything off of it that could take off of it, and we would ride that thing everywhere. We'd run it up trees. <laughs> we I mean I just I just jump ditches. Huh? Jump culverts. Jump That's it. I mean, we would just twist handlebars, you know, twist them back up together. If there was a pond, we was in it. That's right. You know, and then we'd 
they had raised watermelons and we'd take the watermelons and pull them out in there and cool them off and, and then we would eat them and dad said no and you boys don't be eating them watermelons now he said i poisoned one of them <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm not sure in the world we did not this poison. We better quit this. <laughs> but God, listen, we, we have improved, but have we improved to the point that we don't need God? And these people are saying, we don't need you. And, and, he, and he said, if thou hadst known, now listen to verse 42, if thou hadst known, even thou at the least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, that's an exclamation mark, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Now, now notice what he's telling them. You miss Jesus. You've got all these things. You've got your education. You've got your smartness. You've got your way of doing things. You were raised a Jew. You came, you came from Abraham's seed. You were real uh, knowledgeable. You ran the, the temple. Uh, you did all these things, but he said you missed the real thing. And he said, you, this could have been yours, but you've rejected it. And then, this is the way I would think, I would say, okay, would, wouldn't you guys like to repent? Wouldn't you guys like to follow me, you know, him being God? He said, would, won't you come follow me? No, they're rejecting him. Right. They're telling him, we don't want your way. That's a bad thing. And uh, for the days are coming. Now listen, now listen, here's what Jesus is fixing to tell people. Now, here's the thing about God. In Noah's day, God had, a, he had Noah out building an ark. Now, I don't know how long, 120 years to build a boat. Now, that's a pretty good size endeavor. And he had to have some help. Now, I don't know whether he had the money to hire people, but 120 years they're building on this boat. And and we've been up there in uh, Kentucky, wherever it is. Tom, you go with us up there? Yep. So that big thing, I mean, that's humongous. Now, how did they do that? I need in Tennessee. And, uh, yeah. it's and in Tennessee. It, well, I don't know. I it's, it's a replica Tennessee, of the yeah. ark. Tennessee. Ark. Tennessee. No, it's, in it's Kentucky. It's in Kentucky. Okay. okay. I guess it is. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, God, there. now all this time, Noah was preaching to them. And they're watching this boat being built right there in front of them, and there ain't no water there. Now, what did it take for them to realize, hey, you know, this is kind of young. If, if that's true, now here's, here's where we get in trouble. They didn't believe it. Unbelief is evil. When God tells you something, very simple. It, it, see, God could make it so profound that you, you couldn't understand it. But he doesn't do that. He keeps it real simple. All you have to do is to get in that ark and, and you'll be safe. They said, we don't, look at that nut. That, look at them old people down there. They, what do they think they're doing? I tell you what they're doing. They're getting ready to go to glory where they're going to worship God forever. But they said, well, well, you know, I mean, we got a new way of doing it. I believe it. And, and see, the Muslims are really being pushed today. They're pushed in, uh, uh, even in football. And, and Tony, you got any Muslims work out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I figured that. I, 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 they're everywhere. <laughs> and uh, he works on the boat, you know, and they're, they're traveling in different places. They hire just whoever, you know, uh, a warm body. Let's go. <laughs> oh, they don't? <laughs> okay. And uh, But the thing is, Muslims are turning to Christ too. But what's happening to Christians, now, let me say this, the church, the church is being so influenced by the world that we're losing people. We're losing people to the world. I mean, people are supposed to, you say, well, I, I, I plan on serving God. That's what they were saying. One of these days, he said, you know what you're missing? This is your day. And you're missing it. And you know what's going to happen? Now, let me tell you what's going to happen to you. Now, here's the way God is. He warns us. If, okay, verse 43. For the day shall come, now listen to this, upon thee, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. In other words, it's, it's just like you had a moat and you had a castle. He said, they're going to put a trench around you and they're going to hem you up 
They're fixing to destroy everything you have. Not only that, they're going to get your children. You say, well, it's not important if I serve God. Sure it is. It's the most yeah. important thing you could ever do. And he said, and, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You didn't know that you were looking at the Christ. What did you remember what John said when he saw Jesus? He said, Behold the Wow. Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Very, very simple. John came in, and uh, did, did you know John's parents even, uh, um, his daddy uh, got in unbelief, and he would not believe when God told him he was an old man, and he, and he was going to have a baby. And they said, hmm, I find that kind of hard to believe. God said, because you didn't believe me, you're not going to be able to speak until that child's born. And you know what? When he was born, he said, what are you going to call him? He said, John. <laughs> That's right. That's what God told him to start with. <laughs> God knows. You see how he knows everything that we do? And when we walk in unbelief, we get in trouble every time. God tells us to do something. We say, well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think about a lot of times I made decisions when I thought I was right but I was wrong. But God will show you. God will direct you and he won't condemn you. He'll say, okay, come on, I'm going to teach you something. I want to show you something. He said, Peter, let me tell you what you're going to do. What am I going to do, Lord? He said, I would never leave you. He said, you're going <laughs> you to deny you even know me. No, no, wait a minute. The rest of them might, but not me. You talking to you talking to the man now. I mean, I'm 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 the apostle Peter. I'm the leader, you know. And he said, "Okay, uh, you go ahead. You didn't believe me, but he said after he denied him three times, he said there's going to be a, a bird there, an old rooster, and he's going to crow." He said, "And you know, Peter, he ain't believing this." He said, "Nah, sure he's good. No, it ain't going to be no rooster there." And so he denies him three times in, in front of a little woman. He said, you one of them, aren't you? He said, no, I ain't one of them. Now, wait a minute, he's thinking, that ain't good. So they say, your speech betrays you, so he starts cussing. You say, Peter, what are you doing? And then about the third time he, he, that somebody said something to him, he, what he hears in the background, he said, uh-oh, I done messed up. <laughs> and what does he have to do now? He said, well, you know Jesus is going to condemn you. He didn't do any such a thing. See what I'm saying? All he had to do as a child of God is go and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, if you, the main thing, first thing, make sure you're a child of God, right? right. If you're not a child of God, you, you go to God all you want to. He ain't listening. But you give your heart to him, he'll do everything on the sun. He'll take care of you. He'll bless you. He'll bless your future. He'll bless your life. He'll bless your children. He'll bless your great children, grandchildren. He'll bless you all the way down. You just do one thing, and that's just say yes to Jesus. And that's all they had to do. He said, I'm right here looking at you. And he said, you don't know the day of your visitation. Are we waiting to do something for God? He's already called us. He's given us the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I wish I had the Holy Spirit. He said, ask me. He said, you want the true riches in life? And that's and listen, I, when, when we came up, I don't know if y'all remember this, uh, Jimmy, when, uh, in, in the Baptist churches, did they preach about the Holy Spirit very much when you were young? Not a whole lot. I never, I never hardly, I, I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. I mean, I heard about it, but all I heard was Pentecostal and you know, and they jumped benches and all this other stuff, and they did this stuff, and we wasn't going to have nothing to do with that, you know, and then they had tent meetings and this and that. But I didn't know, and when the Holy Spirit came in my life, I thought, wow, I did mm -hmm. not know that this existed. And let me tell you what the Holy Spirit is. That's the love of God. It's put in amazing. A love. It's amazing that he would do that to an individual. God in heaven can reach down his son, make an intercession for you, and you can call on him and, and protect not only you, 
He'll protect your children, your grandchildren, and your whole family and take you all the way through. He was just trying to get them. Now he was up here weeping. Weeping over them. And you say, Lord, do something. Don't. I mean, that's what he is doing. He's weeping. Turn to Hebrews chapter 5. And I want you to look at this verse. Uh, aren't you glad he wept for you? Amen. Aren't you glad he went to the cross? And that's what we look at here in Hebrews 5. It's bad. I, I get my. Sometimes I forget which direction to go in. Hebrews 5, uh, and look in verse uh, 7. Now, a lot of people didn't believe that Jesus was human. They believe he was either God or he was human. No, he was the God man. Mm -hmm. He was human. He got thirsty. He got hungry. He wept just like you would. When Lazarus was dead, they asked the question. Now, what? Okay, you let him die. You had all the power. Why did you, why did you let him die? If you have all this power, why did you let him die? He said, well, you don't know the end yet. Like, I'm going to raise him from the dead. But he said, he finally told them, he said, okay, Lazarus is dead. He said, I want y'all to understand what I'm fixing to do. And then, and he, and he, and he, where's what he did? All he had to do was speak the word. And I'm going to tell you what he can do in your life. He can speak the word, and one word from God will change your life completely, 100%. One word, just God saying something to you, it's amazing. I didn't know God would talk to you. That's one part I have wrong. Well, Lord, you won't be. And you say, well, how does he talk to you? You say, I don't know. Can you explain how God talks to you? But you know, don't you? You know in your soul, in your spirit, that the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something. And you think, you know, I'm I feel led to I feel like I need to do this. Well, God says do it. Just ask him. And he'll, and he'll answer. By the way, when Noah got through with that ark, he done warned those people. He said, uh, okay, Noah, you and your family, get in. Get in. Load up. We get up. We go on. And God, that's a big door, I imagine. Close the door. Shut it. Everybody that was outside of the ark perished. You say, what happened to them? They all drowned. Yep. Why did God do that? Because God had already wept over. He has wept over, and He has wept over America. He has wept over, uh, listen, all the people in this world He cares about. India has said, we, I talked to a young man yesterday. And I was talking about India. India has said we don't want any Christians over here. We don't, they don't want Christ and they don't want any Christians. Now that's just a put on from the government. People that are there, a few people that are saved over there. In China, they, they have a revival in China. You think, oh, that's a wicked nation. Oh, listen, in Russia, they got people that's turned to Christ by the thousands. And don't ever think that God's not being in sovereign. Right. And see, when you stop, when we stop, we, as God's people, quit serving God and worshiping God and thanking God, then we're missing what we need from God. And so, uh, but anyway, they closed that door. They stayed in that ark, I think. I mean, how long do you reckon they stayed in that ark? I mean, this, we're, we're talking about water raising up. This, boat, this thing wasn't made with an engine on it, were we? <laughs> We're gonna run down there. No, it was made to float, as I would walk. And, and it got up to the top of the mountains. You say, how do you know that? Because the seashell is up on the mountains. You say, I wonder how they got up there. Well, now I tell you how they got up there. Say, because God said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover this earth with water. And that's what he did. You say, the whole earth, the whole earth. You see, only God can do that. You say, I believe it or not. Unbelief will get you in trouble. You say, I believe God did it. You say, I don't know how he did it, but he did it, right? How did he save you? You say, I don't know, but he did it. It's him. And uh, y'all we brag on is him. 
And uh, then he said in Hebrews uh, verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers, now listen, listen, and supplications with strong, what's that word? Cries and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Now, let me, let me say something. I don't care how dedicated you are to Christ, and I don't care how long you've lived on this earth. Death scares us. I mean, I'm not afraid to die. If I die, you know, it's just on the other side. How you might die. That's right. That's it. The pain. <laughs> and I'm thinking, but now, we all got this little doubt, you know, you think, Lord, I am right. No, you say, no, wait a minute, Lord, I ain't lived a good life. And I said, you said, what about when you said you've been saved? You've been perfect, right? Uh, no, matter of fact, I, I don't know. I think I probably did worse then a lot of times. I mean, I've done stuff and said stuff and acted up and done this. And, but God had to show me what a wicked person I was. And he'll do that, won't he? He'll say, okay, we need to straighten up, but I forgive you. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. You know why they were, you know why they're praising God? Because they knew they was forgiven. And I'm so glad God's on our side. He, he, he wept. But he was saved from death and was heard in that he he uh feared. Now listen to verse 8. Though he were a son, S-O-N, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, if you don't get that down, if you don't get that in life that you're gonna suffer, you're gonna be a miserable person. Because you're going to suffer. If you live on this earth, you're going to suffer. When you get old, you're going to hurt. When you go through things, people are going to hurt you. Uh, when you go through life, a lot of times, uh, you, you know, you're going to go through uh, a lot of problems, right? Amen? Amen. 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 You take one woman, one man, put them together, one woman, this woman is going over this direction, and the man is going over that direction, and the twain shall never meet. And you think, why don't you understand me? I, well, why don't he understand me? Why, why, why do men do that? <coughs> and you think, I don't know. And, and listen, if you could write that book, I'll say this, if you write that book, you could be a billionaire. Because all you got to do is explain women. <laughs> really? 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 If you really... If my wrinkles fist in the show. Oh, you can write it then. That's what Wayne says. My forehead wrinkles when... See, he's figured that out. Yeah. And he's still trying to please you, but it, it don't work. He, no, no, oh, no. no that, <laughs> you don't go that way. Yeah. No. No, no. No. Okay, here, now here's the thing. And this, this is the way it is. They'll never work together, it'll always be a controversy, and there'll always be trouble. You're going to suffer. You say, what? listen, how would you like to have been Sarah? Abraham is in, you know what he lived in? Tent. A what now? Tent. tent. A tent. Now, here's Sarah, she's, she's having babies, and, and she's old, and uh, they waited 40 years for a child that God promised them. They have a baby, but he, he's already been with his handmaid and they've had a child because Sarah said, why don't you go with my, I, we, I can't have children, why don't you just have sex with her? You said, what'd she say? You're talking about, wait a minute, what did she say? You said, you what? Now Abraham, what did he do? He said, well, he was real sad. You say, no, he wasn't sad. He just said, okay, she said it was all right, so I'm going to do it. Now, did that make any sense to anybody? And it was a disobedience to God, and that, that child is the reason we have Muslims today. That's what they're following, is they follow the handmaid, uh, and, and the son was Ishmael. And so, what a mess. You see what I'm talking about? It won't ever change until we get up young. And I don't care how hard you try. I don't care what you buy a woman or buy a man. 
or whatever toys we get or whatever it is in life, the only time you're going to be complete and feel fulfilled is the day that you go up yonder and be with Jesus. And you're going to say, that's what I've been looking for all this time. You can look down here. You can look for all these things that will make you happy. And God wants you, listen, I, I don't mean that God don't want you happy down here and encourage and have joy. God will give you joy. And he'll work things out. Uh, there'll be things that God, God, prayer works. But, well, men are hard-headed. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> and we don't get it. Now, you, you can fight that all you want to, but we don't understand one another. What, Jesse, what did you say that book was? Here, all of women are famous. Okay. It's already been written. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> Oh, it don't. I have some, but it don't give you the blue book. So that means you've read the book. A couple times. <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> if Jesus suffered perfect, don't think you're not going to suffer. And there's going to be times that you're not going to be able to stand it. There's little times. And, uh, you that have been divorced and went through all these other things in, in life, that's, you know, that's going to happen. Yep. I'm just telling you. You said, well, uh, that won't never happen to me. Don't say that because life is full of bumps. And, uh, but God will be with you. And we need the Lord to help us to get through these things. Right. 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 And I'm going to tell you something. The <clears throat> thing that I admit that I hate in this verse that where Jesus was talking about was the fact that he said you'll lose your children. The best thing you could ever do is, is raise your children for God. Keep them on the gospel and be filled with the Spirit of God. We uh, Listen, folks, we need the Spirit of God. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, you go out there on these jobs, night and day, and you try to deal with people out there, you deal with life. You, you deal with people cussing all the time and using God's name in vain. It grows in you hate it. You know, you hear this stuff. And so the first thing I would try to do on the job was talk about Jesus. And then that was, that guy's a preacher. Yeah. 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 You know, stuff like that. And so I'm going to say it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. they just going to do it just to spite you. Yeah. And uh, Mark Furlow told me one time, he said, man, I... I'm going to apologize. He said, I got my life right with the Lord. He said, I've, I've said things and done things in front of you I know I shouldn't have done. And I, but you don't have to apologize to me. You just tell him that. And you know what? God will forgive us. Aren't you glad we got a God that will forgive us Amen. of Amen. our sin? That's right. And we are sinners, right? right. We, don't, we don't know what we need a lot of times, but we know he does. He knows what we need, when we need it, and he knows how to get us through this thing. Now listen to me, one of these days your number is going to be called. That's that song that Terry sings. If he calls you today, if tomorrow you knew you was going to meet Jesus, what would you do? Would you say, Lord, I need help, please. You, do you know what he'll do? He'll help you. He'll, he'll help you. you remember that cross? That's There's three men on the cross. One in the middle is Jesus. The one on the right uh, looks at the one on the left and says, you know what? He ain't never done nothing wrong but me and you have. And you know what Jesus, he said, Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? See, this is what he said. He, now, you talking about getting close to a day. You miss, you'll miss the day that Jesus was right there and Jesus is about to die. And folks, that, I don't see how God didn't say, okay, angels, go down there and stop this. We're going to stop this thing. This thing is enough. Listen, Jesus is weeping. Jesus is he's caring. He cares about us. He cares about every time you hurt. You say, well, you sure will act like it. Listen, he loves you and he cares. And Jesus said today, you will be with me in paradise. He'll save you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, that you do save us. You save us and keep us. And you share your love and your joy and your home.
going to go home with you one day, Lord, and be in your house forever. Thank you for the promise of the word, God. Bless you. Uh, draw souls to you today and if anyone to be willing to say yes to you today, I pray you'll convict them, draw them to you, and they'll say yes and pray that prayer to you. If they are a sinner and need a Savior, and you'll answer that prayer and save their soul. And throughout eternity, they'll be, we'll all be with you. And uh, Lord, when we fail you, thank you that you forgive us and you make intercession for us every day. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Uh, thank you for these people. And I pray you encourage them in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Go have a good week. All right. Can you try ride with David, David? Yeah. Got yeah, my ride. Okay.